Hi, I'm Jessica from Jessica Wanders, and this is week number five of my ongoing freezer challenge. It's kind of been stop and go, and you guys have all been so patient with me, especially all my members <laughs> who haven't bailed on me just yet. I thought I would do something fancy and put on my face today so I look a little bit brighter, a little bit less ill. I've been ill. <laughs> so, so here I am. This is what I look like when I put, put makeup on. Anyway, this is week number five of my freezer challenge. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to see more videos from me or check out the join button for other ways to support my channel. I do wanna give a quick shout out to Robin Swan. She has been a long time viewer and she became a Wander Further member this, this past couple of months, which was super great. Gave me a little boost when I wasn't feeling very well. So I appreciate you, Robin. And I want to show you what I've got from Amazon because I normally do chickadee shout outs for members, but look what I got. I got to show you what I got. I am so set up. <laughs> look at this window feeder. Now they've come up a couple of times, but they get scared. I'm so excited. Put some seeds in there. It's so cool, right in my window. Ha <laughs> ha, chickadees. It is cold and miserable here. But we don't have snow yet, but I also picked up this stand. We were getting a squirrel in the yard. So I got this stand so we could hang the feeders up there and hang, this is a squirrel, that one back there, the far one is a squirrel proof feeder. And, and indeed, the squirrel came, checked out that feeder, and then left. <laughs> he didn't even try. So I'm super excited about all those things I got for the birds. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a chickadee shout out, Robin. <laughs> Thank you so much for your added support, Robin. Especially since I've been like so slow lately. <laughs> so let's see what I came up with this week. Enough about the birds. Good morning. For breakfast this morning, I'm going to do a Longanisa breakfast burrito. It was a recipe suggestion from Reggie Gome, I think. <laughs> I'll try to get all your names right. I do try. I had heard of Longanisa and garlic rice before, but I've never heard of it in a burrito wrap. So that's pretty interesting. I'm going to give it a try. I've got this sweet Longanisa. I don't know. Uh, there's, I think there's spicy too, but that's not what I have. So I hope it still tastes good. <laughs> this longanisa, the wraps, obviously the rice to make garlic rice. I'll post the link in the description below for the recipe. I'm loosely trying to follow. The recipe actually doesn't include garlic in the ingredients, but then it gives instructions for making garlic rice. So it didn't say how much garlic I'm going to use lots because you know, the more garlic, the better. I've got some shredded lettuce some grated cheese, some tomatoes still from the garden, and I've got some eggs, probably use three eggs to make some breakfast wraps. First thing, I'm gonna open this and then take these all out of their casings, all the sausage casings, and fry it up. I'm hoping it's not too tricky to get this out of the casings. Yeah, there should be no problem. Pretty easy, no problem. So the recipe called for six of these longanisas. I'll use these for something else, probably fry them up actually in their skins or something else entirely. Probably half of a package of these longanisas. So now we'll just fry this up, break it up. up the longanisa and I have this leftover oil which is probably wonderful. I want to use half of it to fry up the eggs and half of it to fry up the rice so I'm going to save some. So I just scrambled three eggs with salt and pepper. Just going to scramble those up. The 
set these aside. <laughs> the oil kind of solidified. Right, I've got it scooped out. Some of this oil. Just a little bit actually. Might even not need all of it. About four cloves of the big garlic. Mm, it smells lovely. Just for like a minute. Add one cup of rice and cook it together. Some garlic rice. <laughs> Maybe that's a lot of garlic. It looks like disproportionately a lot of garlic actually. I'm gonna add more rice. A cup of rice. Just because I put way too much garlic in, I think. We can have some more garlic rice. That's okay. That looks better. More rice. Less garlic. I'm not really sure how much garlic, because it wasn't in the recipe I found. It just didn't have how much. Extra garlic rice can't be bad. I've got rice. This recipe says it makes four, so I'm gonna try and divide this, everything up, except for the rice, into sort of four servings. Cured type sausage meat. Sometimes you can find it really on sale, so it's a great deal. And then egg. Everything smells good with that garlic rice. I have no idea if I'm doing this properly, but here it is. A little bit of cheese, shredded cheese in there. Tomatoes, a few tomatoes. Shredded sliced lettuce. I always add way, way too much stuff to my burritos. That's what happens. That's just life. And then I'm going to make two more, and then I'll probably make four servings with those longanises. All right, here are my longanise breakfast burrito wraps. Pretty excited about it. That's pretty good. It's a good flavor. Yummy. I think this is really good. Thank you so much for the suggestion, Reggie Gomi. What a great idea. This is so tasty. It was a little bit involved frying up all the different ingredients, but once you start putting it together, it goes really fast. And it's quite tasty. Let me know, because I use the sweet longanisa in this. Let me know if you if you make these. If you prefer the other one, I don't know what's what it's called. I think it's spicy though. Hot. If it's better in here than the sweet longanisa, let me know what you think. And uh, and give it a try. Yum. For breakfast. I made some more. I made four of these, four of these burritos, enough for me and for Mr. Wanders for breakfast. Yummy. I have these beets in the freezer. And I found an interesting recipe for a beet hash with eggs that I will post in the description below. Basically, uh, potato and beet uh, hash, and then eggs on top with some parsley, maybe salt and pepper, butter, fry the potatoes in some oil, that kind of thing. I'm gonna take about a pound of these beets. They're already cooked. They were roasted beets that I then peeled and froze, so I don't need to cook them. They just need to thaw. It was definitely supposed to be a lot less potato, but I just grabbed a potato and chopped it up into kind of hash sized pieces. I think you're supposed to have twice as much beet, but I don't I have almost equal. I think, I think I've already cooked the beet. So now I'm just gonna cook up this potato. I'm gonna boil it. I think the recipe says seven minutes to boil it for. Well, that, have a lid. We have some oil. I think probably seven minutes was too long for the potatoes, just as a as a note. A few of them turned to mush. Oil. These dissolved potatoes. <laughs> I'm so bad at frying potatoes and making them look like good potatoes. And one pound of beets. I chopped these up, 
smaller, so they were like hash sized beets. I also chopped up one a small onion. Got some salt and pepper. Definitely the potatoes are sticking. Uh, yep, I'm falling apart. It's not really what you would want, but that's the way you got. Yeah, it didn't really turn out exactly what I wanted there. It just overcooked the potatoes, but it'll be fine. They'll still be yummy. Just mushy. Just more mashed than I wanted them to be. Maybe they're supposed to be. Uh, for the eggs, maybe. You never know. In the Martha Stewart recipe that I'm going to post below, this looks much more fabulous. All right, I switched the pan because it was just getting ridiculous. Let's see what we can do here. Let's try the eggs. It says to make like little wells. In the hash. One. And I only broke one, so there you go. Ta-da! I am gonna put this lid on and kind of poach these eggs. I forgot to salt, salt the eggs. You know, by the time the eggs are cooked, kind of the bottom of the beets and stuff are burnt a little, so I'm not happy about that. It's not really sitting in a liquid. Eh, it's not going super well. I'm a little frustrated. It looks brilliant. Just gonna sprinkle a tiny bit of dried parsley on here. I don't have any fresh stuff, that would be wonderful. All right. Some of the beets got a little burnt on the underside and the eggs didn't poach what's up as well as I wanted them to. I think I'll eat this with some sour cream or yogurt just because that's what I always think of when I, I think of eating beets. I definitely would be careful not to overcook the potatoes next time. I did get a little bit of a crunch on there. The egg, <laughs> the egg isn't very soft. Some of the, oh yeah, it's okay. Once you put the egg in, you can't really move the, the hash around very much. Mmm. Oh. Okay, that's pretty good. Mmm. Beets and potatoes and eggs. Aha. Uh -huh. Who knew? That's actually really nice. And you can eat it with a little bit of yogurt. Beets and yogurt are good. Mmm. I mean... You have to like beets a lot. <laughs> I like beets a lot. So that's very sweet actually with the potato. So that's nice. This hash is wonderful. Even without the eggs. I mean, you could use this hash just as a side dish, but I mean, the egg is very nice in there. It just takes forever to kind of cook. So I've got some really browned. Oh, it's brown. It's not, not burnt. Some crispy parts underneath there in the egg. See? I like that that combination. I do. Uh, next time I would just be a little bit more careful with the potatoes. Cook the eggs slower on a lower temperature. When this is beet uh, egg hash. Yum. For lunch today, I am going to make up suggestions. So many people suggested leek soup. The first suggestion of potato leek soup with cheddar cheese was from Mandy Siebener. I think I'm saying that right. At, at my law student suggested a potato leek soup with uh, cheddar cheese. I've actually used up all the cheese that I wanted to from the freezer, but I have some more to put on top. I've got leeks, a little bit of flour, onion, one potato, some cream, some chicken broth, and butter, and we'll whip that up into a very nice soup before lunch. We'll post a link in the description below for the recipe that I am loosely going to try to follow. And lots of people suggested leek soup. I tried to find one that didn't have potatoes in it, but I, I couldn't. And whenever I make 
leek soup. It's always a potato leek soup. If you're making leek soup without potatoes, please let me know. That'd be pretty interesting. Sometimes there's other suggestions that people have to put in there like carrots, peppers, that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna make a really basic, mostly leek, one potato soup, potato leek soup topped with cheddar cheese. Butter, at least two, maybe three tablespoons of butter. One whole onion chopped. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm gonna uh, blend this up with my immersion blender or put it in the blender after it's all cooked. Four cups of leeks from the freezer. I did the, the first onions for about five minutes and then the leeks just for a couple of minutes. And then I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of flour, really mix it together. I'm gonna add four cups of chicken broth. Nine hundred milliliters. Chicken broth. This one potato that I chopped up. Boil that and cook until those potatoes are cooked. When those potatoes are cooked, then we're gonna add another cup of cream. You can use a lighter milk if you wanna have lower calories, but this is 10%, that half and half cream that I buy. And I blend it up. If you don't have an immersion blender, you can put it in a regular blender in batches. And that'll work just as well. But I like my immersion blender it's super fast. Definitely get the big bowls out for cream of potato, cream of leek soup with potato. Yummy. This recipe said it makes six servings. I think probably not for us, just because we like a big bowl of soup for lunch. Probably make four, four servings. On the top, we want some cheese, some melty, wonderful cheese. Sometimes I put bacon bits on, but I don't have any right now. But that's wonderful too. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Wendy Siebenar for the potato, the leek and potato soup with the cheddar cheese on top. Let's give it a try. I think the only thing that was different in this recipe was it was a lot of flour and a lot less potato. Like I usually make a potato leek soup and it's kind of lots of potatoes. This one just had one potato and then a whole bunch of leeks. So the ratio is a little different than I'm used to. Let me just try this. You know what? There wasn't any salt in there. I mean, the cheese has some salt in it. With the cheese, it's almost salty enough, but I'm just gonna add a little bit more. You can add pepper if you want. Mix in that cheese. Oh, there'd be salt in the chicken broth too. Mm. Oh, so good. Thumbs up for me. Leek soup or potato leek soup. Cream of potato leek soup. Yummy. Nice. All right, tonight I am just winging a dinner. I don't have much energy. So um, I was thinking craft dinner, but to add a little bit to it, I've got this ground pork that was in the freezer. It needs to get eaten up. Ground pork, I've got these green peppers from the freezer this freezer cheese. And I think I'm gonna do like a sloppy joe mac and cheese. Oh, I've got these hot sauces from some takeout, some Mexican takeout. And I think I'll throw in there too, some Worcestershire, Worcestershire, some brown sugar, ketchup and mustard just to make like a sloppy joe mix and then mix it with craft dinner. I think it's gonna be amazing. I have these two hot dog buns that I can kind of have it 
on top of, and I also have regular bread. I'm just gonna make the craft dinner according to the package directions. I've got the package and the butter and milk, and then I'm gonna fry this up. I might add a little bit of extra cheese, but I am trying to use up this cheese, so I'll probably add some cheese, I don't know. Maybe I'll throw it all together and then bake it in the oven. That sounds fabulous. Maybe I'll do that and melt some cheese, some more cheese on top of it. Yes, sloppy joe mac and cheese. I did find some inspirational recipes. I'll post one of them in the description below, but I'm kind of going my own way with this right now. Here we go. I'd just like to point out that Canadians eat more craft dinner, mac and cheese, than any other country on the planet. Go Canada. Splash of milk. Never put as much milk as it says, because I don't like my craft dinner that watery. I almost forgot, I think everything should have garlic in it. So I have so much garlic, so we'll put a whole bunch of garlic in it too. An onion. Three cloves of garlic, three big cloves of garlic, one pound of lean ground pork, some salt, some pepper, two tablespoons of Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce, about half a cup of ketchup. couple of tablespoons of mustard. This stuff is kind of like a taco hot sauce that we got. I think it'll be okay. It does have kind of a taco -y flavor to it, which isn't really what I'm going for, but we'll add it in because I want to get rid of it. More. More taco -y stuff. Just some brown sugar. Maybe two heaping tablespoons of brown sugar. Pour a cup of water just to maybe be able to mix it up. Properly. It smells like a pretty Mexican um, sloppy joe. Mexican sloppy joe. That's what it smells like. Simmer that. Frozen ground pork from the freezer, garlic from the freezer, green peppers from the freezer, maybe some cheese from the freezer. It smells pretty good already. I'm just gonna mix it in. Got the last of the freezer cheese. This crumbly nonsense just doesn't work very well. I'm gonna add half of it to the pot and stir it up and then I'll put some on top as well. Make it more cheesy than it already is. I think my favorite was like a chili, chili mac and cheese that we did. That was pretty good. This smells pretty awesome. And the last of it up on the top. Oh, I'm happy to be done with this cheese. Freezer cheese isn't always this horrible. I think it was just in the freezer for a really long time. So it got really, really dried out and horrible. <laughs> so, so it's no good. I'm gonna put this in a 350 oven for half an hour. All right, I lost the video of the first serving of the, of the Sloppy Joe mac and cheese. Let's do it again, again. It is Sloppy Joe mac and cheese. Microwaved. This is second serving. It was really good the first time too. I'm glad I added some more cheese to it. I don't really like that taco seasoning, taco thing, but I had to use up that hot sauce. It's okay. It's very taco-y. Good enough for a quick meal. Fast meals I'm about lately. <laughs>
Fast meal, low effort. Yay. I found an interesting recipe called potato and leek mash with sausages. I've got this. This is the first of a few bags of leeks. I'm gonna use, I don't know, a bunch of it, however much, maybe, maybe even half of it uh, in a mashed potato. I'm gonna make the mashed potatoes with cream and butter and uh, I'm gonna fry up these leeks and then add them to the mashed potatoes. I'm gonna fry up these sausages I'm gonna make a gravy. I don't have any gravy mix, but I've got this beef broth stuff. It's like a liquid beef broth. I'm gonna thicken it with some flour, maybe salt and pepper if I have to, uh, just to make kind of a gravy. I'm gonna just eat some of these carrots. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna, you know, microwave some carrots to go alongside this. Potato leek mash with sausages. I've got these nice bratwurst I found in the freezer, so. I'm gonna fry those up and just have sausages on uh, potato leek mash. Sounds yummy. First thing I'm gonna do is peel these potatoes and get them boiling. Those are my potatoes from the garden. I've been having fun keeping track of how long recipes are taking me. So if you're interested, it is four o'clock. Four o'clock, almost two minutes to four. Just in case you care, I'll tell you what time it is when I'm done and eating. Carrots. A whole lot of leeks. All different kinds of potatoes. I've got some rough sits, some red, red New Orleans, and some Yukon Gold potatoes. I'm hoping for some leftover mashed potatoes. So I'm going to boil these until they're tender and then we'll make mashed potatoes out of them. Meanwhile, we're going to fry up all these leeks, butter, cold butter. I'm just guessing, because there's no instructions on this Parador. I think I got this at the dollar store. There's no instructions about how much you should add to make a certain amount. So I have no idea. I know that it's like a concentrate. If I want to make two cups of gravy, maybe I'll add Four tablespoons, that seems like too much. Let's see what it looks like. That's three, I'm gonna try three first. It still looks pretty thick, actually. I'm gonna leave it at three tablespoons. I should have probably tried two tablespoons first. And I'm gonna add three tablespoons of flour into this while it's cold and whisk it up. Not too bad, actually. I think I think that'll be gravy. Hopefully, that turns into gravy. Just want to fry these up a little bit, and when they're nice and soft and a little bit browned in some places, and I'll set them aside. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to that same frying pan. These nice bratwursts. I think this gravy is getting a little bit thicker. Looks pretty good. It's coming along. Mmm, gravy. A quarter cup of milk. Cream, cream, I mean. And then just season to taste, add some salt. And we're gonna add back in the um, leeks. Mix those up, kind of fold them back in. potato leek mash. I did divide up some of the mash. I'm gonna add some sausages to this. I think I'll take this one. Uh, yep. 
there's one left over. Put the sausages on top and that gravy. I didn't add any spices to the gravy mix because that beef bouillon was very salty to begin with. So I didn't want to add any more salt or anything to it. It's quite tasty. I think Mr. Wanders will eat two sausages. I've got one sausage and his for work tomorrow. Just to add some color and some more veggies to the mix, I did up some carrots. Excellent. There's my dinner. It is 5.04, so it took just over an hour, just a couple minutes over an hour to make this dinner. I think the mashed potatoes probably took the longest to make. That's why I like leftover mashed potatoes. Let's try this sausage and leek. Mashed potato and leek mash. Great, that uh, <laughs> bouillon cream, bouillon juice. It's very salty, so I'm glad I didn't add any salt to it. Let's just try this mash, because it's got the leeks in it, which is what I was trying to get rid of. Oh, and the carrots. Yeah, that's really nice, actually. The little leeks and the potatoes, yum. That's good. Mmm, mm-hmm. The leeks are really nice in there, actually. Yeah, I like it. This is a good, hearty fall meal. Yummy. Potato and leek mash with sausages. I'll leave a link in the description below for the recipe that I pretty much followed, except for the gravy part. I just made my own gravy. So, and then I added carrots. Thumbs up for me. So that's it for this week. Let's see what the freezers are looking like. I've been doing a lot of sorting and organizing. This freezer, the downstairs freezer, is stuff that I don't need to use up right now. This is jam. I couldn't find a ground cherry jam recipe that was approved for canning, so I just froze it. We're using it up upstairs in the fridge as well. And these are the ground cherries. I'll use them for something. And then I've got the pita breads and some wraps that I don't need to use, a pie thing. I made a bunch of spaghetti sauce that I froze in these containers that we can use for quick meals. I do have some more Hubbard squash, but it was packaged later on in uh, like the spring this year got one more pierogi and then this is all my ground beef that is current um, bacon and stuff so stuff that I don't need to use I can continue if I find stuff to put it in this freezer so that's the downstairs freezer I don't need to show it anymore because I'm not there's nothing in here that I need to use and anything else that I put in here is stuff that I'm not planning on using right away this is my most recent attempt at organizing the upstairs fridge freezer, which should include things that I need to use up right now, except for the ice cubes. I did look in the deep freeze outside. I've been doing a lot of consolidating, so I had had two bags of garlic. Now I've got one bag of garlic. I had, you know, several bags of green peppers and I threw them all in the same bag. So over here, I've got green peppers. I've got hot pepper mix, that, that was also in two bags, so I put it in one bag. Got some Hungarian cheese peppers as well, still lots of peppers. A tiny bit of celery, a little bit of beets, and then the cranberries are down there still. These are the meats I brought in from the deep freeze, some of them uh, that I wanna use up right now. This is a sausage, I've got these crab imitation, crab meat, the pierogies still, that I want to use one more of the longanisas and then two pack, small packages of steaks. I've got these bread ends. I'm not sure what kind of, I don't really have a lot of fruit to use up. Um, I do have some ground cherries and I just threw some bananas into the freezer. Could I make a banana ground cherry bread pudding? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna try to use up these small tortillas. They're kind of like soft tacos. They're it says large size, but they're clearly pretty small. I've got broccoli, broccoli. That could probably go into one bag. And then, yes, I brought some in these cubes of, oh, these are cupboard squash. It was a, those are cupboard. Is this, this is Hubbard. Sometimes we grow hybrids that are pretty good. I can't remember, I call them cupboard. There's a cross between Hubbard's and I can't remember another kind of squash. Anyway, they're just the same orange squash. And then I've got this kale that I brought in from the deep freeze and then still carrots. I, this is the last of that crappy bag of peas. And then the green beans and peas I had left over from the $21 week grocery challenge. And I found these weird, weird chopped, 
chopped cherry tomatoes. I don't know why I did that, but that's what I've got. Some summer squash and then these uh, zucchinis. I've got three things of three cups of zucchini. Um, more kind of squash and one more thing of shredded carrots purees. Yep. And back here. Yeah. So lots of, lots of either, um, leeks or green onions. More leeks and green onions. These ones are leeks and I think this is shredded. This one is shredded cabbage. So lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. It looks better when you back away and squint your eyes. It looks better. This is what my deep freeze is looking like. This is all meats and stuff that I pull out for whatever meal I want to make. I know there's meat in here that I need to use up, but um, I'm not going to drag it out. I've got some just regular butters and stuff that I'm not in a hurry to use that I don't, haven't moved downstairs, just some cheese. I just throw those, threw those bananas in there. This is underneath here is what I've been trying to use up. And after I pulled out, the stuff for the fridge freezer, it's looking like a little more progress. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with all of these red habaneros, who knows? There's more carrots. I'll have to get in there and see underneath everything. Those look like, oh, those are, those are green beans. I should bring some green beans out. Hmm. So I'm gonna keep working on this or I'm gonna burn out and save it all for the candy challenge. Those are, those are, <laughs> those are just cherry tomatoes that I threw in a bag. Yay. And probably some more shredded cabbage and stuff in there. Well, there you go. But it is lower. It is lower than it was. Is it getting better? I think so. These are just some lasagna that we bought. Yep. I think it is. I think it's getting more organized. So that's it. If you're enjoying my freezer challenge, my haphazard uh, freezer challenge, don't forget to give it a like. You can click my face to subscribe to see more videos from me or check out the join button for other ways to support my channel. I'll leave links to the entire freezer challenge series if you want to watch it all from the beginning and anything else that I think that you might be interested in. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys.